good game uh, in prospect. I'm sure everyone's waiting with huge anticipation for it. Uh, both uh, Sundowns and Al Akhli have a lot to play for in the group, and um, still, still three games to go and a lot of work still to be done. So uh, one game at a time for us, uh, and the next one is a very difficult one against a very good opponent. And uh, yeah, we we putting in the work and we preparing ourselves and uh, looking forward to it for sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, obviously, it's 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 a, it's a big game to be honest. Uh, uh, as Miami Lodi Sundowns, we're going to 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 make sure that we get uh, to 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 win the game because obviously, obviously, also them they wanna win the game, but oh, we needed we need the win more than them. So I think we're going there to fight to make sure that we get the three points. Look, uh, our focus is always on ourselves. We try to to make sure that we can do the best that we can for this football club. And uh, the focus is, is has to be like that because we we can't control what happens to, to to the other teams. We can focus on ourselves and we can focus on on our performance and giving ourselves the best opportunity to to win the football match and, uh, of course, then to move as close as possible to 10 points. And then uh, we, have to, we have to then try to target qualification after that, whether first or second position, and we have to work very, very hard. Nothing's going to be given to us on a, on a silver platter. We've got to earn everything that we receive. And this is the mentality that we have. Uh, and, and, and that's the only way that's going to help us to, to survive and, and continue the journey of the Champions League. We try to win every single game. We try to win every single training session, Kamo. We try to win every single pass. We try to win every single sprint. We try to win every single uh, duel. The, the mentality is, is, is based on that. We try to, to breed a mentality that is recognizable by the fans of this football club and the fans of the football club uh, recognize winning and uh, the club is based on that. So we try every single day to make sure that we win. We win the day, we, we win the match, we win the session, we win. And that's, and that's the mentality. And so we go into, into, the, next, into the next match uh, with that mentality. Fortunately, we are still in the last three competitions of the season. We, we still have a big shout in, in how well we do this season in, with regards to how we perform and, 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 and where we end up. And, and so far, the players have shown uh, an incredible appetite, um, uh, an intensity that is, that is worthy of the performances that we expect. And so I, I expect also as the coach nothing less than, than a spirited fight to, to try to win the football match on Saturday. Percy is playing a completely different. Um, um, the last three games also completely different as compared to where he played against us. And against us in Cairo, he played three different positions in 90 minutes. And, uh, but, but very good player, um, one of our best exports. And uh, I, I don't speak too much about him first because he's not a Mamelodi Sundowns player. And so I've got to have a lot of respect by what I say and how I speak about players that are not my players. Uh, and second, because maybe I'm a little bit biased, of course, in my opinion about Percy, so I try not to say too much. Um, so I will leave it at that. Uh, Alakli, with regards to having never won, is, is difficult to comment because when I look at the, their team, I see a team that's got 393 uh, CAF Champions League appearances amongst their starting lineup against us. That's, that's close to 400 appearances in the Champions League, and that's the level of experience that they have as compared to my team that has 170 odd CAF Champions League appearances. And so for sure, without, uh, without uh, 
looking too much into 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 the threat that they possess and the quality that they have and like with every other team they've got weaknesses but we have to try to win the football match and we have to try to make sure that uh, regardless of whether we play at three or six or nine uh, whether we play at home or away and like we showed with the same enthusiasm and, and character and and spirit we have to we did that in Cairo and we have to do it as well again this is the games that the players have got to get used to playing uh, big games with uh, consequence behind the scoreline and and the only way they can get used to doing that is to play these games and, and get their, that level of experience and so we all have to give them a fair chance a chance to 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 make a name for themselves and make uh, history for themselves with the football club and um, it starts with every game, every training session. So uh, not much changes with regards to that. Obviously, like uh, I just uh, I just need to to help the team firstly, uh, and make sure that uh, uh, um, I'm doing very well when I get in the inside the pitch, and make sure that I help the team with everything I can do. And uh, yeah, obviously I used to play for Black Club, but it was tough that side. We were fighting for relegation every season. But when you, you come to Miami to side, that's obviously you, you're going to play uh, Champions League, Net Bank Cup, MTN 8 in the league. So uh, the mentality, obviously, it, it, it needs to, to adjust to those kind of things, you know? So I think, yeah, I, I did adjust a lot. and. Uh, Every time when I go, go, go inside the pitch, you know, I want to I wanna learn. I want to make sure that I have the team also. When the draw was made, I, I spoke about the, the profile of the group and I made reference to the fact that there's four very good sides, very, very good sides. Cotton Spore have uh, incredible pedigree in this, in this, on the African continent, uh, one of the big teams. Uh, in Cameroon, if, if not the biggest, with a huge pedigree, both in terms of winning things uh, domestically for, for, for in their competitions. And also, you know, that they've got a reputation of having played in the Confederations Cup final, they played in the Champions League Cup final. And so uh, they are one of the very good sides. Ali Lal, and an extremely competitive side with very, very good players. And we saw that last season already when we were in the same group. Uh, and then a very experienced coach, of course, this, this time around uh, in uh, Ibenge. Uh, someone that, that was in a, who won the Confederations Cup last season, who's, 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 who's played against Sundowns and all the big teams with his experience of also having coached uh, AS Vita. And, and, and so you, you, when you profile the group, you profile the group knowing that there, was, there is four very good sides. And, and four very good sides means Mamelodi Sundowns is one of the very good sides in that group. And so we know our chances when we work very, very hard. We put, we put a lot of hard work into our preparation and, and, and we, 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 we work hard on the pitch we know that we can perform and compete against anybody on the continent and maybe even even fancy our, our chances against anybody so we want to take it one game at a time and one opponent at a time and and not look too much ahead of of ourselves so yeah step by step uh, and as i said we give we give this group a fair chance a fair chance to succeed and a fair chance to to, to, to make contributions to, to this incredible football club and, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the most important thing with regards to, to the expectations and the perspective moving forward. An incredible coach, Steve Kerr is one of the, the, I follow a lot of, I follow a lot more basketball coaches than I follow football coaches. Um, but uh, that's only because of the mentality and, and, and maybe the competitiveness of the sport itself. Um, but um, I, the only way to get that experience is to play these games. You, you play the games of consequence, you play under pressure, you play... 
games where you, you have to deliver the results and the pressure is completely different. The question to, to Sailor a little bit earlier was, how do you adapt to the pressure of fighting for survival and, 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 and the pressure of, 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 of winning things? And it's, it's pressure for sure. And like they say, it sounds cliche, but the reality is it's, it's quite true. There's, there's pressure everywhere, but the pressure at the top is actually a lot better than the pressure at the bottom. And, and both, both ends of the spectrum have a lot of pressure. Um, but I would rather have the pressure of, of finding a way to win and making sure that we win every single day than having the pressure of not having to lose. And, and this is how the f big football clubs are in the world. You, you watch uh, last night, you see, you see Bayern versus PSG. PSG have invested a lot of money in, in, uh, into their squad over the years, but it becomes very, very difficult for them to get a kick into, into, into the next round. And so this thing is, Jose Mourinho called it football heritage. Uh, and everybody said, well, well, but it is true. Uh, but how do you build heritage? Heritage is built over time and history and consistency. And, and, and that is where we have to try to give this group an opportunity to build uh, the, the heritage that a lot of these clubs have. And these clubs that you speak about that come from North Africa, even though we, we know we can compete against them and on any given day we can give our best and, and, and we fancy our chances. But for sure they, they have the football heritage. But the football heritage doesn't win you matches over 90 minutes. <coughs> Uh, and, 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 and hence I, I keep s pleading for, for an opportunity for this group to, to be given a fair chance and not to be judged by, by past results, but to be given a fair chance to build their own football heritage. And, and, and the only way they can do that is to play more games, games of consequence and, and continue to compete against very good sides and so that uh, they give themselves a chance to succeed. Congratulations, I think fully deserved. Um, uh, am I surprised? No, because I think uh, national team call-ups have to be merited. And like anything else in football, uh, meritocracy pr probably becomes the most important principle. And um, I think the nine uh, could be 10, could be 11, in my opinion. But my opinion doesn't count because I've got very little say in how the national team is composed, if, if, if any say at all. And so mine is just to congratulate the players and, 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 and wish the national team all the best. Uh, difficult, difficult fixtures ahead, of course. But I think, uh, I think my opinion, I think um, you've seen Germany do it and succeed. You've seen Spain do it and succeed. And I, I don't think there should be a problem with calling up uh, nine players from, from Mamelodi Sundowns, especially if the performance merited and, and uh, it's for the benefit of, of, of the nation. And, 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 and um, yeah, mine is to wish them the best of luck and congratulate them. Every player who plays there or deserves to be the, in, the, in the Wafana Wafana camp because everyone is working hard. It's working. It's me. Uh, everyone is making sure to, that everyone helps the team with everything they have, and uh, I think, yeah, it's 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 a good thing that they chose nine. They can choose more. I don't know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'd love to see more. Yeah. I'd love to see more. Maybe maybe twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. <laughs> How about the entire squad? <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure, sorry, no pressure. The biggest thing is uh, emotional detachment that I've learned over the last couple of months is I'm so emotionally detached. Uh, and many, many of the, the reasons are because I understand what is, what is at stake. Uh, and I understand a lot of what is what is uh, required, and so I try not to have any emotions with regards to to how I perceive things and how I look at things, and and maybe I I haven't even looked at that the collapse in that light. Um, 
is always a reflection of the hard work of, of, of the group, the hard work of uh, everyone involved at the football club. Uh, it means we are recruiting the right players and that recruitment goes into the scouting department, uh, the financial department, the, the, uh, the, the sporting director's office, you know, it means we are, we are working very, very hard in making sure that we are surrounded by the right players. And then we also, it also is a reflection of the amount of hard work that is being put in on the pitch and that is work that is, ban, is done by many a people and not just myself. And so the coaches that support the players, the analysts that support the players, the conditioning department, uh, SMU, who is doing an incredible job, uh, Stuart, who's doing a fantastic job to, 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 to rehabilitate the players and bring them back on time. And so it's always a collective effort and, and that's why maybe I, 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 I try to have this incredible, or this, not incredible, but uh, it's, a, it's a demanding task of trying to stay emotionally sober. So congratulations to the club. I'm sure that this makes the football club very happy and the supporters extremely proud of the players. And, uh, and because it makes everyone else proud, of course, then because I am uh, who I am at this moment because of them and because of the football club, for sure, I share the same feelings and uh, very proud of them. But uh, I, they know that uh, we can do more and we demand more and we, we require more and we push for more uh, and that we are never satisfied with uh, any any achievements because we know we are capable of doing even more. Well, firstly, uh, Champions League, I mean, like, uh, as players, we, 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 we sit amongst each other and we have a chat about this, this thing, this competition, every competition we play. So one thing I, I, I've realized that as every 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 match we play, we, it's important, and we want to make sure that we win the match. So the Champions League, obviously, last season, the past I think four or five seasons, we were knocked out at uh, the semi quarter quarter. So this time around, we want to make sure that if we can go to semi finals, you know. So we wanna we wanna win. We wanna win the Champions League, obviously. Because we, we know we wanna we, we wanna reach those bigger stages. As the coach said we wanna we have goals where we wanna go, you know. So, yeah. So uh, on Tabodo's point, he is a good player to be honest, and I think uh, everyone deserves to play in Sundowns. But the coaches they're the one who make uh, the choice who plays, who doesn't play, you know. So yeah. Speaking to Michael Hoffman a little bit earlier today, and he was telling me how difficult it is for him. Uh, imagine how, uh, the coach who's come in and already came in, and uh, the next day he was traveling with us to to Cameroon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, comes back to South Africa, and we we went to Egypt. We are back. We 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 were in Cape Town. So from, from the extreme north all the way to the extreme south, um, no training days, and sometimes you can see it with the players on the pitch, and that's what helps, helps make the importance of, 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 of camps preseason, because that's really where we, we get the work done. And a lot of the principles that are embedded in the team are, are principles that we, we worked very, very hard on in preseason. Uh, and you see it, you see it with the players. Sometimes I, I, one of the most important things that uh, I've learned over the, the, the last couple of months is how to manage the players, you know, and, and, and every single day, I, and, I, and maybe they, they, it's, it's, it's become such a redundant question or, or rhetorical question because every day I'm, I'm asking, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? And, and every day I want an answer about how they are feeling because I understand the the the. It's an enormous it's an enormous responsibility that they have. The other day I said to them, I I feel sorry sometimes for them. You know, I really do. You know, because they they carry such an incredible uh, responsibility, and and not a lot of people understand how how tough this pressure 
is to, to deliver every two, three days without a lot of rest, without time with their families, without uh, training sessions for, for preparation. They come in, there's already video clips and they've got to stay for, for long video sessions because that's, that's most of the time that we have. We have short time with the training sessions that need to be intense and, 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 and uh, focused on preparation. And, and so they've got a very difficult task. I, I, I really don't envy them. And, and not a lot of people understand how difficult this, this, this responsibility is for them. Uh, but they carry it, like they say, heavy is the head that carries the crown. They carry it very, very well. They carry the pressure with, uh, with good positivity, uh, good sense of brotherhood amongst themselves. and, and uh, and uh, that's why we, we all should be very, very proud of them. Everybody that, that feels and understands the yellow beat uh, needs, to, needs to sit in a situation where we, we, we are very, very proud of this group because of, because of uh, the incredible consistency that they've shown in, t in the performances. And it's not easy. So, so kudos to them and huge admiration and respect for, for the work that they continue to do. Yeah, very important. A healthy dressing room is what you see on the pitch is a reflection of what is happening off the pitch. And uh, where do I stand with the group? I'm very proud, very, very proud. Proud of the intensity, proud of the spirit, proud of the training sessions. I watch, I watch the training sessions with so much pleasure. You know, it's, uh, it's, I can't wait to get home and put on the training sessions. And sometimes I know I send them clips uh, late at night and I make phone calls and I speak about body language and I speak about the training performances. And it's not easy, like I say, but it's because I can't wait to get home and watch the training and review. And sometimes I even enjoy it so much that I, I, I play it back again and I, or I go into the matches and I, and I watch. So before, before even being a coach of, of this uh, group and this football club, I'm actually an incredible fan uh, and, and number one supporter. And the only thing I can say is, is we, we have to do our talking on the pitch. Um, a lot has been said, and some of it not true. Some of it not true. And that, that is also one of the things that disappoints me, you know, is, 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 is I have big respect for, for the work that you guys do. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult because you've got to report you've got to report to a generation that that only appreciates sensationalism but they also the while we are trying to also be sensational we have to try to also report the truth and some of the things that have been reported were are not true and but it's not for me to speak about because i don't speak about because then i give i validate some of the the talks, so I don't want to get into the space because that's not my space. My space is to coach this football club. My space is to protect this football club. My space is to coach the players, help the players to improve. And if you were to ask me, if the season were to end today, let's say they, they said, ah, COVID is back. And we get into isolation again and we, we the normal football, nothing. What type of feeling would I have? I would be so proud of this group. Uh, you watch the players, you watch Sela, uh, the, the growth, improvement. That's, that's, that's hard work and, and coaching. Uh, Cassius, hard work, coaching. Rodwin, hard work, coaching. Grant Kekana, hard, Toby Mvala. Hard. So if you were, I can go on and on and on. Uh, so if you were to say to me today, the, what feeling would you have? Uh, about the group if there were to be no more football and, and no competition. I tell you, I would be so proud of this group. But, and rightfully so, sport is about winning. And we judge people in the modern day sport on what they've won and, and, and what they've achieved. The danger of that is that you miss, you miss profile uh, athletes like Harry Kane, for an example, who's a top striker but has won nothing. And so you want to say to me, Harry Kane is not one of the best strikers in the world because he's won nothing. 
you misprofile a, a coach like uh, Marcelo Bielsa, for an example, uh, or Disabri, for an example, at Brighton, and you say, oh, because he's won nothing, he's, he's, he's not one of the best coaches. If he wasn't one of the best coaches, then you wouldn't see coaches like uh, Pep Guardiola, Julian Nagelsmann copying trends from Desebre. I can I can guarantee you because I watch, I show the players. I see, I see so many coaches copying uh, Desebre, the coach of Brighton. Uh, Roger Schmidt is at Benfica the other day. You watch uh, Club Bruges versus Benfica. Won nothing by Leverkusen. Uh, and uh, Benfica now, the guy has won nothing. But in my opinion, probably one of the best coaches in the world, one of the best in top three. Because I watch his games, I learn, I study, and there's so much that you can copy and, 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 and improve. So yeah, sport is about winning. Uh, but I also think sport is also about small marginal improvements and gains and day-to-day -day investments because that is what I think probably makes a bigger contribution because then you, you gauge how much you are helping people to become better human beings. And that is not something that is always evident based on success as, as, as a yardstick. Your update. Uh, um, yeah, you know, we, we, we have a very healthy squad at the moment. Um, still, uh, Mkulisi picked up a, a, a knock in Cairo, uh, so she'd still be out for, for quite some time. Uh, Bongani Zungu picked up a knock against Marumo Galan, so, so also still out for maybe another two, two weeks or so, not something too serious, fortunately. Uh, Lebo Mabu is still a long term uh, absentee. Uh, Nasir, a long-term absentee, but they are back both on the pitch, um, even though still doing isolated training. Lisedi Kapingas picked up uh, an injury a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's back on the green grass. Um, Rushin picked up a concussion and then also pu pulled something not really, I, I, it's, it's complicated injury with Rouge, but also the, 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 the medical department profiles it better than me, but also we should expect Rouge out for quite some time. Um, yeah, and then there's a couple of late fitness tests for a couple of people because of the load over the last couple of weeks. So Musa has got a, a we have to manage the situation with Musa. We have to manage the situation with Rivaldo. Um, is there someone I'm forgetting? Savredra. Savredra is back on the pitch. He's, he started training with the group, uh, but still not completing full training. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Ne? Give Mutupa a hairline <laughs> fracture on the toe. Uh, picked it up in in in, in Cameroon in Cairo, uh, so gift is gift is out, and then Kutu Kutu's got a family situation.